These are the top 10 earphones in the world. None of these are loners. None of these are something I borrowed from a friend. I didn't sit down and do a short demo. All of these have been owned by me in my possession for a long period of time. Several of them have been bought multiple times actually because I've let them go because I'm dumb and then I go back to them. This video is a continuation of a video that was started on January 25th, 2021 titled the top 10 earphones in the world list. I'm going doing it again as stated in this video when there's change or three to four times a year. It is July 9th, 2021, 11.58 a.m. in Japan. And this is my list right now. First is going to be the Unique Melody MEST Mark II International or the original version Mark I JP version because I couldn't get a fit um, with the first MEST. This is my video for the custom set um, and my video for the original set is right here. The best earphone Unique Melody MEST Mark II. What's great about it? Um, the overall tuning the replay of instruments in my library like a bass guitar like a drum kit a guitar electric or rhythm vocalist male or female cymbal strikes are natural um you don't have to really bust the bank to get that set it's around fifteen hundred dollars it does according to people that have input their feedback it plays classical well it plays jazz well it it is not having any clear disqualifier like that is that fit is ridiculous sony ir z1r or that some, something is there's nothing really that jumps out and says i can't use that it's a great all-arounder except for its price but there are people that got enough money where that actually is their all-arounder whether it's a custom version of it or the original version let's take a look at the graph that's the Elysian right there. Let's go ahead and drop that. It's sub bass, mid bass focus. It comes down and corrects itself at around 500, which is the magic point for me, which gives complete life to all instruments in the low frequency that I listen to in my library. And it doesn't impede with male or female vocals to an audible level that I can pick up a huskiness or it sounds thin or some kind of odd tuning. It has a subdued mid to upper mid region, which could impact vocals, but it doesn't seem to do it, which lends some believability to the fact that it does actually benefit from that bone conduction driver. It's, it's hard to measure and you can't do it on a graph, but to the ear, I don't seem to get the fatigue that I would get from six. Um, so what's good about it is the tuning, the price and the fit. What's not good about it? There's some people that find this region right here to be fatiguing. 6k because that's where most people find fatigue i actually don't get that and part of the reason that i'm a huge fan of it is because i know that that's there i have ocd and i listen for it i can hear the energetic symbols and other stuff but it doesn't fatigue me in the way that a balanced armature dynamic doing that would do because it does i have obsessive compulsive disorder um and listen for everything and then get a little bit tired early because my brain's processing stuff constantly and then check out like this would be a set that would be great for like 30 minutes or one side of dark side of the moon maybe a little more and then put it down i can listen to the mest mark ii uh for hours and i have and i don't suffer the fatigue that other sets that might have this right here would present to me however other people have said that they find this to be a little bit much for them so that would be the thing that i would say what is not as far as price and overall tuning presentation the backing of the item and all of those things check all the boxes also the community has absorbed it time has gone by it's a great set by most people's estimation that is set number one let me go ahead and close that next one on my list is called the elysian acoustic labs x and this is the newest this is the first addition to the diamond tier the s plus since I really made the list, or since Unique Melody joined, which is probably about a year ago, the original version, the Elysian Acoustic Labs X is uh, is just a beast. I can't. Let me show you. So, what's great about this? Well, let's look at the bass on this first. The bass is virtually identical in its tuning from the sub bass, mid bass, and how it goes into the mids as the Unique Melody MEST. I didn't know that, of course, when I'm doing the review, but what I find appealing is what I find appealing. There's not much variation between the way a kick drum, a four string bass guitar, the way the 
vocals of a male singer or a female singer are impacted. Uh, the lower portions of a guitar, whether it's a rhythm, acoustic guitar, or electric guitar, don't seem to be impacted by anything that's going on in this region. It's tuned brilliantly, it's tuned safely, and it's tuned in a way that gives authenticity to those instruments which make up a majority of my library. So I'm a huge fan of it. Let me take the mest out. The Elysian has an exceptional amount of extension and as I did and mentioned in the video the one part that might be of concern which peaks right here at 16k to 15 it this is very hard to pick up for the human ear unless you're about 20 years old and you have exceptional hearing and there's actual info in the mix which there's often not even in flack and losses files which I have most of my library actually all my library that I review is made up of flack uh, or DST, it's completely lossless that you see in the video. There's not really information here, uh, but the extension is out there. Symbols have a, a exceptional replay. The birth, life, and death of symbols that I harp on and do timestamps about are played back great. The drawback to this set is absolutely unrelated to its replay. There is nothing wrong with low frequency instruments, there's nothing wrong with mid presentation of vocals, there's nothing wrong with upper harmonics related to female male vocals cymbal strikes harmonica um glockenspiel nothing with info in the upper range uh is treated wrong by this tuning the tuning is brilliant what's not ideal about this set for some people would be the fact that this is handmade and you're going to have to wait and that itself for mo some people might be like oh that's life or for other people waiting is not something that they really want to get into but to get something this good made by one guy you're going to have to wait he's going to grow and get more popular and if he passes on this to other people and trains them how to do it um the quality versus quantity battle begins and he'll have to address that in his own way by either controlling the output or expanding his uh, creator base by having other people help him. That's his issue and topic. He's been in the hobby for a long time. He's a grown man. I'm sure he'll take care of that. But that's something that you got to consider and I've got to come up with some negative. And the only negative I can possibly think of is your wait time. You're going to have to wait and the only way to address that is to hire more people and with that comes the need to oversight and I'm sure he can hand check everything before he sends it out so I guess that's not really an issue but I gotta put something on the negative side Lee's an acoustic X diamond tier absolute beast spent 3726 got an early to early special 3726 on PayPal through Facebook and I feel stoked that that's winning my friends right there let's go ahead and take the Lee's an acoustic X out. The next one on the list would be the Sony IER Z1R, which is a set that's probably on most people's list or is on more lists than any other single set. It's a combination of the configuration. It's got a dynamic full range driver that's taking care of basically everything. They're linking that across with a BA set and then they've got a micro driver taking care of the tweeter. And it's got, I think the micro driver that Sony uses is probably the best. This is my video versus the Legend X. I found the Sony IR Z1R to be superior. Um, I, I really think the magic of the Sony is not the bass, which is good and can kind of create the thin, the thinness in the mids can it's it's real. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my graph, and I'm gonna I don't have the I have the Sony IR Z1R. It's going to be for my Patreon's next event, but I don't have it up on my graph yet. So I'm going to go to Super Views real quick. And I'm sure he wouldn't mind because I'm showing him right now and also that he's got the Sony. And there's not really much unit variation in here. And this is the Sony. It's got a bass that is elevated. It's got a drop. It's th this right here and this right here to this region. It's got a slightly different presentation of the gain. can sometimes give a thinness to the mids to some people. And that thinness is most apparent with, in my opinion, vocals. I can hear it. It's got less weight in the vocals, almost to an unnatural sense. But that would probably be the only problem. This little spike that we've got here, let me inspect, that exists again at, right in that wrong zone at 6. It doesn't really give me any issues. I find the treble tuning of the 
IER to be. I don't know if it's the tuning actually, if it's the driver quality that's actually awesome and it is presenting this right here with a dynamic driver and not a metallic plasticky timbery BA that might not do this quite as well. A dynamic driver doing this does this exceptional. The appeal of this is the the overall tuning is excellent. Again, $1,500 roughly for a top of the line audio performance, audiophile, round, all around. What's not great about it is this area right here can kind of give a sense of thinness to vocals. It's still top tier, but I've got to come up with stuff. And again, it's like a piece of lead uh, that mm, falls out of a lot of people's ears. A lot of people have bought this, loved it, let it go because of the fit, not because of the sound. But if you can't get a good fit, how can you get a good audio replay? So the people have moved on from it. Um, again, $1,500 for this, $1,500 for the MEST Mark II. So two of my top three are not like crazy unaffordable. They're absolutely for most people, if they're trying to reach for the top of the hobby, they're actually quite affordable. So let me go ahead and via the bottom of here, jump back to my own target. So that's the Sony IR Z1R. It's still top tier. And the next one on my list is the Theo Audio Oracle or Clairvoyance. These are really I know this is another proof of companies don't release stuff in the mid tier to eat away at their upper tier. Like people say that the, the MEST Mark II by Unique Melody of course doesn't uh, compete with the Fusang because it's not near the price. I saw somebody mock me. I see you bro. That, that just exposes your ignorance. The Unique Melody MEST Mark II has sold many, 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 many more units than the Fusang and it has nothing to do with their limited production because I'm talking about the other one. the the more affordable one. The tuning is what creates the sales and when people start to buy it they start to say this plays my library well and people start to hey hey I have that library and it spreads and it spreads and it spreads. The Unique Melody has sold more because it's a better tune set. If, the, if it was priced more and it kept the same tuning it would sell more than the other ones. So this idea that companies obviously put their best foot forward and their most expensive items are their best items it's not true and Thea Audio does the same thing the Oracle actually is a more complete replay the clairvoyance you're you're leaning on the idea that there's three other BAs inside and that itself is the reason why it must be better than the Oracle that doesn't make sense because the Tia Trio has three drivers two balanced armatures of 1DD and there's many many examples of something that the Legend X people love it 2DD's 5BA's there's no EST's inside this there's a lot of sets that don't have lots of drivers driver count is just like money it does not dictate the quality of the audio replay nor do companies and their money assignment and their own inner decisions of this is our flagship and this is not our flagship that does not automatically you are you that's propaganda almost that's that's promotional don't follow companies and their flagships and assu assume that that's the best thing that they make the clairvoyant the oracle is a good example because i think overall the oracle by thea audio let's go down so what do i like about the thea audio oracle um, it like the Elysian. Let's take a look at the Elysian. Actually, we'll leave that out. The bass and the sub bass is elevated. It comes down and corrects itself before it gets to the mids. This elevation, 65, 59, is about 6 dB. That's the variation that you've got between the sub bass and the mids. And then you've got a very slow gain. And then you've got extension that goes all the way out. And this is kind of similar to the Elysian, actually. It goes from one side to the other and does a good job it is an accurate replay that doesn't emphasize vocals too much it doesn't emphasize guitar too much it doesn't put the bass 
uh, over the guitarist. It doesn't put the bassist or the drums over the vocalist. It puts everything in its proper position. It might be the most polite of all the sets that I have listed. Um, I think it's the best that Thea Audio has created up to this date, and it's not in their upper echelon as far as price goes. Did they do this on purpose? No. It just turns out this way. I'm of the opinion that this is the best thing Thea has released uh, up until this point. A second company releasing something that isn't the most expensive, but I find it to be the most appealing. And that is the Oracle. Clairvoyance I've already spoken about. The AEW Canary is a set um, that a lot of people are not really familiar with. Let me take out the Oracle. There's the Canary. If you look at the Canary, you're going to think those caps look familiar. No? Okay, if you're not seeing it. The Canary is... Why do I like it? It's got two dr dynamic drivers that are... It's the isobaric configuration. It's also got a tuning that is a very, very similar to the Mangard T. Sub bass focus, not too much mid bass. It's great for vocals. It's got the gain region, and then it's got information that's going all the way off the scale. I've got to re graph mine. I took a photo of it, but I didn't graph it. Um, in its price range, I still find it to be fantastic. There's consideration in the future about what I'm going to do with this. Um, and uh, there's also talk that this is going to be discontinued, but I can't confirm this. But if you've got the money and you want to try stuff that you might not have before, the AEW Canary is something that uh, is excellent. The bass is excellent. The treble is non-fatiguing. It's got a lot of detail. It's got the wax guard on it, which I'm not really understanding why. The mess does the same thing. I'd prefer to have those nozzles open without anything impeding them because I, I just would prefer it to be that way. Um, what's not good about it? The price and the lack of other reviewers input on the item ideally like the oracle clairvoyance the z1r the, not the elysian the unique melody you, you'll have a, a great pool of opinions to pull from and you might see some things that don't hit the target and then someone they got the same library they're looking for the same thing and they're claiming they found it and that's exactly enough for you to pull the trigger mm, something like carry doesn't quite have that much of a pool so that would be what is not ideal about that set but its tuning is brilliant. Uh, it plays back my library like a beast. The next one on the list is going to be the QDC Anole V14. This is a new member. This is the video right here. I'm going to do a full review for this. I'm due. I got to do it. This has got multiple configurations. There's not a radical difference actually in it, though I'd state that the rock tuning of it is quite good. This is easily the best QDC that I've ever heard. QRST, QDC, classic overtone, rock. Let me throw a rock inside there. You can see this has a lot more bass than the Oracle. It's got great extension like the Oracle and doesn't have mm, a lot of gain. This is BA bass right here. Let me go ahead and drop the Oracle. So this is the V14. You have uh, extreme kick and impact, probably the best BA bass uh, in the hobby. The V14 by Thea Audio would be close, but I'd say probably this is in this configuration. The V14 has got gobs and gobs of detail. Uh, it's got an authoritative impact that only lacks the tactile sensation, but kick drums and bass guitars and hip hop uh, hits all sound authentic. They sound powerful and potent, and then the benefit of balanced armatures is that they don't have the the decay or the sense of veil that because of us maybe being slow VAs are faster they're not as authentic but you can elevate your base in this way without penalizing the mids and the QDC V14 is an example of that being done so the tuning is great on this set the problem with it that you might have is that it is quite expensive it looks beautiful but it is um I don't have it listed up here I believe I paid Three to four grand for that. Let me take a look again real quick and see if I can find music tech. Two thousand seven hundred. Okay, Meh. expensive, but I think I thought I paid more than that. Maybe they dropped the price, or maybe I did pay that much. I don't really recall. That sounds a little cheaper than when they actually released it. It's still a lot of money. It's probably the best. This is a ten ba four est set, if I recall correctly. Ten ba four est. Yep. Yeah. And so the, the negative would be price. And it doesn't have a dynamic driver, but you'd be hard pressed to really, really pick that out because this is the closest thing that sounds like it does have a dynamic driver. 
Next on the set is going to be the most unfamiliar to everybody, but I refuse to take it down. This is called the JQ Audio White Knight. It's got one dynamic driver, six balance armatures, and four EST. So it's got quad EST, six BAs, and one DD. That's 11 drivers per side, and it's a tribrid. It's an absolute savage of a beast. This is what it looks like. It's got a, an amazing cable. It's got nice caps painted on it. This is the, in, the bar, it comes with way too much stuff in my opinion. That's a closer look at it. There's really nothing else out there except my videos because people haven't purchased it because it's an unknown company to many and it's asking price is its problem, which is um, $1,800. So you're getting 11 drivers, quad E-STAT, six balance armatures going across the mids and you're getting a tuning that looks like Let's take this out. JQ White Knight. This is probably the best set I've ever heard when it comes to heavy metal. All of the busy stuff that's going on, particularly the harmonics of um, guitars, dual guitars, distortion pedals galore. This has gain but it's subtle and as you can see it goes all the way off the scale this is extension also my friends and this is a presentation that mm, for listening to stuff like metallica um judas priest um black sabbath there's really nothing that is on the level of the jq audio white knight it's very safe tuning it doesn't emphasize harmonics in a poor way its mm, drawback would be its unfamiliarity to many people. It, there's not a lot of people out there to give you opinions and say that this is its weak point and this is its strong point. So you, you, you're you almost blind buying to go off a single person's recommendation. But mm, compared to what I've listened to, which is most of the stuff out there, including very expensive stuff as you've seen recently, I consider this to be top tier. JQ Audio White Knight, stuffed with drivers. It sounds like it is. It's the, the, the cohesive replay jq audio is going to bust out someday because they're going to do something similar and affordable less driver count something like the oracle and then show their stuff and then introduce themselves to the world and then maybe something like this would be more palatable to people but just judging on sound quality the jq audio white knight with its one dynamic driver its six balance armatures and its four ests is just uh it just goes to show what stuff out there you've never heard of, like possibly the Elysium. It's stunning, actually. Let me take the JQ Audio out of there. Next one would be the Empire Ears Odin. A lot of people consider this to be their favorite or better. Um, I think it's a great set. I didn't like it at first because I was expecting it to be a, a more improved version of the X, uh, the Legend X, which I bought four times, and I, I wasn't quite pleased. I think technically uh, it's it belongs in the S tier. Go ahead and take a look at the frequency graph of the Empire Ears Odin. This gain region is substantial and most people that talk about what its weak point will be is gonna they're gonna talk about this right here. Let me get some consistency with that line. Uh, this is substantial and it, in my library it puts things on me and this would be a set that I would listen to for a half an album and then move on because I'm personally fatigued by this region more than anything else. So stuff at 6k can get on me. I can put up with that. The elevation and the way that this treats vocals is something that gets on me faster. And a lot of people say that something beyond 10 dB, that's the threshold for a lot of people in the gain region is. So this is cutting this. This took the Legend X um and greatly reduce the bass kept the gain roughly the same so what you're doing is instead of taking the v by dropping the x and leaving the treble at the same you're pulling that out and making that the audible focus of your ears and it's very very obvious to the ears it's quite expensive also let me take this out so i think this would be the weakest of the sets that i have uh, in my S tier because of that and because of my library and again library can't overstate this when people are talking about their top list the library and what they listen to is absolutely essential information because the weak point for the Empire Ears Odin is how it plays vocals how important is vocals to me it's m my entire library everything's vocals I, I need that it's not part of my library it's my whole library 
So the good part is its technical prowess. The bad point is its price, and it's got a weak point that is right dead bullseye in what I find to be the least acceptable of weak points. But it gets into the S tier because it is a uh, technical savage. And then the last one in here is going to be probably the surprise for a lot of people. And this is called the Mangard Tea. It only costs about 300 and something dollars, I believe. Uh, two ninety nine. so let's say $300. This is, uh, I think it's 1B, 1DD6BA. Yeah, 1DD6BA. It is a sub-base focus set. It's a JK Mangard Tea. Let's go ahead and put that up. The tuning of this is brilliant. If this was done by a company that was more well known, uh, this is not dissimilar from the AEW Canary. It's because of the price and the company and the name and the lack of familiarity that some people can kind of blow this off. I've seen people talk about this and say, hey, it's no, no, no big deal. Their library doesn't cross mine. It, it can't possibly. The way that this treats uh, electric guitar, acoustic guitars, male female vocals, something like a Fleetwood Mac Rumors album, um, the 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 warmth that's brought by the sub bass, the mid bass is enough to give correct and authentic replay to the instruments in the library or on the rock band for a group like Fleetwood Mac without interfering with the vocal replay. It has a gain that, let's say it starts at 60 and it peaks it we go it's got 5 db gain people that say this is shouty i'm going to do a video using a spectrogram we're going to talk about the vocal range that exists in here and compare it to other sets that people say they like like the blessing 2 or the another set the odin and we're going to compare the 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 shout of vocals in this particular region and how a set like the manga t that some have said is, sh is shouty is, is exhibiting 6 dB of gain in this region. We'll take this whole part right here and when we do a spectrogram and then we'll compare it to others and if this is shouty then other things are screamy. And it's got a dip at right where you would want to put it and then it's got extension pretty much off the scale. It's a fantastic set. The benefit of it is the tuning and the price. Um, there's a lot of people that have made opinions on it now so it's not lacking of that. The downside of it would be um, it's not EST in the treble, uh, which is better to handle this, in my opinion, than balanced armatures. I struggle to come up with a real ding on a set that costs $300 and is actually a better replay than a lot of stuff that's mm, 10 times its price. It's, I'm struggling. I'm, what did I say on my list? Manga T. Fits first batch MMCX after June 12th. Okay, my ding on this set was that they changed the termination from MMCX to 2-pin. That's all I got still to this day a year later. I can't come up with a that's a problem with the Manga T. Some people say it lacks a good slam because the mid bass isn't really up. I can get it, but it's just right there for me. So let's go over it one more time. Unique Melody MEST Mark II. Elysian Acoustic Labs X. Sony IER Z1R top tier the three kings Thea Audio Oracle or Clairvoyance I would lean towards the Oracle I don't think that the three two three additional BAs make that much difference I don't think they make any actually I am interested in people to say what track they listen to and are we talking about um, layering and stuff that's done by compressors and filters in a production lab and you're claiming that the three BAs do that better than two I I got to nail down what people are actually talking about um, the AW Canary which is really maybe the inspiration for Thea Audio because it looks like they got the caps from it the QDC and only V14 uh, 10BA 4EST set that has the great EST extension when it's done right uh, it lacks a dynamic driver but they've got a tuning profile in the rock that mm, you will be hard to realize that that's not a dynamic driver Empire Years Odin, probably the weakest in this group, weaker than the one that's 10 times cheaper, which is the Manga T, because it's got, in fact, actual shout. It's got five BAs in the middle. Um, I'm sorry, the JQ Audio White Knight. Skipped over that. 
a uh, fantastic set that's going to get more love a company that should maybe target something more like the oracle range one two two get people in with the good tuning get let go of a lot of that extra stuff in the box build a fan base control quality control and then maybe some people will be drawn to the white knight later because it's one six four and eleven driver absolute savage for heavy metal it's still my go-to for heavy metal wrecks. It treats you can listen to guitar solos all day long. Jimi Hendrix mm, albums back to back to back without a problem. It's it's awesome. It's technically excellent. The Odin is a great set technically, and it's got a very obvious weak point that most people pick out when they're talking about cons. Could be shouty. With a person with a library like mine, it is shouty. Um, and it's going to be interesting when I do the treble part of my spectrogram to compare. And I'm going to do EQ corrected samples of this and this and how these treat vocals. Because if this is...